Hi, it's Tom with Digital Foundry with a look at the new and improved Steam release of Quantum Break. Now this comes months after the Windows 10 Store version, which to be honest didn't do this game justice. It was unfortunate in many ways, arriving as it did with a number of visual bugs and stability issues. For the best experience at the time, you really had to turn to the much better optimised Xbox One version, or wait for patches months down the line. So today our focus is on this new Steam release. Unlike the Windows Store download, which uses a DirectX 12 renderer and only runs on Windows 10, this Steam version instead uses DirectX 11. The team at Remedy has stated they're much more comfortable working with this older API, and hence there's no DirectX 12 support included in the Steam release right now. It also means of course Quantum Break runs on older Windows installations, including Windows 7 and 8. And not only that, but surprisingly the DirectX 11 Steam release is much better optimised by comparison. Visuals are of course identical for both versions, but the good news is Nvidia cards in particular can expect higher frame rates on the Steam release. So let's take a look at the GTX 970 first. We're running both sides of this test on a Windows 10 machine with fully updated drivers. Obviously the left is the DirectX 11 renderer provided by Steam and on the right it's DirectX 12 on the Windows Store. Both run with 1080p selected, ultra settings and with the game's unique upscaling mode enabled too, basically forcing the game to combine four 720p frames to create a whole image. Also, it's worth noting both sides of this test run with VSync enabled, and therefore 60fps is the ceiling here, since the Windows 10 Store version has issues running with our usual frame rate tools above 60fps. That's the setup then, and well, the GTX 970 results speak for themselves. It's a vastly smoother ride on DirectX 11, meaning you will get higher frame rates across the board if you buy the Steam version. In terms of the raw stats, DX11 turns in an average of 44 FPS, as compared to 33 FPS on the DirectX 12 version. That's a 33% boost in performance due to a simple switch in API. And not only that, but the erratic frame times this card suffered on DirectX 12, with spikes to 83 milliseconds and over, are evened out on DirectX 11. It's a big upgrade, not just in the frame rate line, but also in the reduction of stutter. Now sadly, even though we're approaching 6 months since its Windows 10 store release, we noticed our GTX 970 not only hitching like this, but also eventually forcing an Nvidia driver recovery. This is with the game and all GeForce drivers fully updated to 372.90, and yet we're still seeing the game freezing like this, whereas the Steam version has absolutely zero problems with the card and coasts right on through. Let's be clear here, we had hoped this issue would be solved by now, but unfortunately the team at Remedy has stated we've seen the last update for this Windows 10 version, as explained in a fairly surprising tweet that distances itself from the release. It's a shame for those that bought it and still have problems, whatever that might be on this GTX 970, because the Steam reissue completely solves it. With that being said, let's move on to more current cards. Using the same setup, 1080p, ultra settings, upscaling and vSync on, this is the GTX 1060 in action. Once again, we're seeing a fairly sizable upswing in performance on Nvidia's cards with a move back to DirectX 11. If we're talking averages, DX11 gives us 47 FPS across this test, compared to 39 FPS on DX12. It's not as big a jump forward as we saw in the GTX 970, but still, that's a 20% performance boost if you've opted for the Steam release here. Fortunately, the GTX DirectX 1060 had no major stutters or crashes in the first place on DirectX 12, and frame times are as smooth as ever for the Steam release too. The improvement really is with that simple uptick in performance, rather than solving any overarching stability issues. It's again good news for Nvidia card users here, but what about AMD GPUs? To answer that, we have the same test running on the RX 480. Again, 1080p, ultra settings and upscaling are in place, but this is where things get a little odd because between DirectX 11 and 12, there's absolutely zero performance gains on this card. It's a decimal divide for average frame rates on either side, with both turning in 43 FPS and a 0.02 FPS lead on our DirectX 12 run through here. Obviously, that's entirely margin of error stuff, and you can reasonably say there's no advantage either way you look. The Steam and Windows 10 store releases give you the same level of performance on the RX 480, and frame times are pretty solid either way too. Which creates an interesting situation, because if you'll remember, AMD cards already put in a stronger performance at launch with Quantum Break, but with frame rates remaining fixed in place for the RX 480 on DirectX 11, and the Nvidia cards making up ground, that advantage disappears. Check out this three-way view as an example, where all three run on the DirectX 11 Steam release. It's the same max settings as before, but the GTX 970 and 1060 pull ahead of the RX 480 by varying degrees here. The newer 1060 leads the pack by a consistent margin of 4 frames per second compared to the AMD card, and with the older Nvidia cards sitting between them. 
So next up, let's focus on just the GTX 1060 and RX 480 and just what it takes to get the game running at a lock 60 FPS. Of course, running the DX11 version at 1080p ultra preset and this time with no vSync enabled shows us moments where the game tips above that 60fps line. But these points are fleeting and even with the performance boost on the GTX 1060 we're still a ways off here during shootouts. That said, this is still a really decent level of performance at ultra if you wanted to simply play with a 30fps cap. The overall performance level sits between 40 to 50 FPS for the most part of these top settings and well even turning all settings down from ultra to high doesn't fix the situation, with performance especially on the RX 480 dipping into the low 50s. To really get a tight lock on 60 FPS playback we need to go one lower with the medium settings across the list here, so that's everything from volumetric lighting to global illumination quality dialed down, all of which broadly matches the visual settings we get on Xbox One. Except the good news here is we're no longer constrained to 30 FPS, now we're flying. In fact at medium settings here, the divide between GTX 1060 and RX 480 only amplifies, with Nvidia's car taking a massive lead in the same suite of tests. It's a whopping average of 102 FPS on the GTX 1060 compared to 73 FPS on the RX 480. Both are perfectly serviceable for a 60 FPS lock of course, and the AMD card is hard pressed to dip below that number, even if it is closer to it. But no doubt there's a bigger safety margin for the Nvidia car to work with here. It's enough of an overhead to make some of the high visual settings viable if you wanted to mix and match between medium and high presets. Anyway that's the lowdown on where Quantum Break stands right now. Long story short, this Steam release is without a doubt the better way to play if you have an Nvidia card. DirectX 11 fixes the stability issues we had before while boosting frame rates by a hefty margin. For the AMD side it's less of a big deal and you're pretty much getting the same performance regardless of version. So that's a wrap, if you found this breakdown useful don't forget to like and subscribe below, and until next time, thanks for watching.